So, have you ever tried to divide by zero? Maybe put it in a calculator just for it to say undefined or error. Maybe you have asked your math teacher and been told that it isn't allowed. Some of you probably accepted that answer and moved on without thinking about it. Today, let's actually think about it. For the others who weren't satisfied with that answer, today I'll redeem you. Kind of. You'll see. Real theory and why math isn't just what's taught at school. Now, before we get into real theory, you'll need to know some other stuff first. Section 1. Why can't you divide by zero? If you've thought about it or seen other people talking about this topic, you may have heard of a few reasons or figured them out yourself. First, let's start off by realizing that division is the opposite of multiplication, that is, 10 divided by 2 equals 5, because 5 times 2 is 10. If you don't know the answer of the division, you can figure it out like so. 12 divided by 3 equals x, because 3 times x equals 12. You can see that x would be 4, because 3 times 4 gives 12. Now let's apply this logic to 0. 1 divided by 0 equals x, because 0 times x is 1. And we can clearly see where the issue is. This approach won't work, because any number multiplied by 0 gives 0 as an answer, not 1. The other approach we can take is using something called a limit. We'll start off with the number close to 0, and get closer and closer to it, to see what the result approaches. Just to see that this approach is valid, we'll use an example without 0. Say you want to figure out what 10 divided by 2 is. You can see that, approaching from above, 10 divided by 3 is around 3.33. 10 divided by 2.1 is about 4.76. 10 divided by 2.01 is about 4.975. 10 divided by 2.001 is about 4.9975, and so on. We can see that it's approaching 5, and the exact value of 10 divided by 2 is indeed 5. Now, let's try to figure out 1 divided by 0 using this approach. 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 0 0.1 is 10, 1 divided by 0 0.01 is 100, and so on. We can see that the answer keeps getting bigger and bigger as we get closer to 0. So when we do get to 0, it seems like the answer should be infinity? Is that right? Well, not quite. There is an issue. See, for a limit to be defined, it has to give the same value approaching from both sides. We saw earlier how approaching from the top down worked for approaching the correct answer for 10 divided by 2. Now let's do this from the bottom. 10 divided by 1 is 10. 10 divided by 1.9 is 5.26. 10 divided by 1.99 is 5.02 and so on. So yes, it does work in this case. Now let's check back to 1 divided by 0. Approaching from below, 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1, 1 divided by negative 0.1 is negative 10, 1 divided by negative 0.01 is negative 100, and so on. So going from below, it seems to be approaching negative infinity. But the answer can't be both positive and negative infinity, so it remains undefined. What we have just discovered is what mathematicians call the limit going to 0 plus or 0 minus. One approaches 0 from the positive side, one from the negative, and both need to give the same value or else the limit does not exist. Okay, so how does this help us? Section 2. Infinity? Is 1 divided by 0 infinity? Well, not quite. But we can do something clever. As you can see, going to the left of the number line approaches negative infinity, and going to the right of the number line approaches positive infinity. But what if we decided to take the number line, compact it more the further out you go, so the range between positive and negative infinity becomes a squeezed now finite size, and then fold it up into a circle. Both ends now become one singular unsigned infinity at the top of the circle. What we have made is known as the projective reals. It's all the real numbers but projected onto a finite circle. 
So now in the projective views, 1 divided by 0 is infinity, but so is 2 divided by 0. If you think that could cause issues, we will come back to that at the end of the video. Every single number divided by 0 is infinity, except 0 itself, which causes another issue. But we'll take a look at that in the next section. Also, as a side note, for those who know complex numbers, the projective views can be extended to the complex numbers by adding i at the front of an L sphere and minus i at the back. This structure is called a Riemann sphere. Now, if you don't know about complex numbers, don't worry, because that won't be needed in this video. This is just a side note. Section 3. The case of 0 over 0. If you recall, I mentioned that 0 over 0 presents another issue. What is it? Well, recall what we were doing earlier. In the first method, we interpreted division as the inverse of multiplication, such as 10 divided by 2 equals 5, because 5 times 2 equals 10, and that 1 divided by 0 did not work, because no x can satisfy the requirement that 0 times x be equal to 1. Now let's try the same thing with 0 over 0. 0 over 0 equals x because 0 times x equals 0. Now this one is more solvable. Too solvable, actually. Any number multiplied by 0 is 0. So the answer to 0 over 0 is any number, or every number, actually. But we can't have that. There should only be 1. So what do we do? Now, relating this to the limit explanation, I actually had to rewrite this part of the script, because it wasn't accurate. Basically, you run into something called indeterminate forms, if you look at the limits. And I think it'd be easier to not worry about that right now, so let's basically ignore the limits. But the same idea applies, multiple possible solutions depending on the situation. So, can we solve this? Yes, but we need to modify math in order to do so. Well, this shouldn't be a big deal, because we're already deviating from the standard by using the projective reals. So, one more deviation shouldn't be an issue. I'll touch on this more at the end, but for now, let me introduce real theory. Section 4. The basics of real theory. Before we get into the inner workings of it, I'll explain the general idea behind it. This section won't be technically accurate, but it will give a good intuition. It will be explained properly in the next sec section. Basically, the main idea is that 0 over 0 doesn't have any one correct value. Well, we can simply fix that by adding one. We'll add a new point called the bottom element and place it in the middle of the circle, making a shape that looks like a wheel. For those using complex numbers, it'd be in the middle of the sphere instead, like this. First of all, the bottom element is usually written like this, with an uptick symbol. But some people prefer an alternative notation, where it is called the nullity, and the Greek letter capital Phi is used to write it instead. This notation comes from a slightly different number system though, so we will use the original notation and naming, not this one. Okay, so what does the bottom element do? Adding, subtracting, multiplying or dividing the bottom element in any way, such as bo bottom element plus 2 equals bottom element just simply gives the bottom element back. Like, for another example, we could also divide this by 0, and that would actually equal the bottom element as well. Apologies for my bad drawing. Or we could multiply it by, say, infinity, and it doesn't matter, the answer is still the bottom element. This complicates the rules of math, because, for example, x minus x does not always equal 0 anymore. Instead, the paper for real theory proposes the rule x minus x equals 0 x squared. Though the simpler x minus x equals 0 x seems to work fine too. Section 5. The inner workings of real theory. This explanation will be a bit oversimplified, but for general use cases it is fine. So, first of all we start with two numbers, 0 and 1. We can make the other numbers by doing math operations to these numbers. So what operations do we have? Well, a math operation can be binary, 
meaning you put in two numbers and get one answer, such as 2 plus 2 equals 4. Addition is binary. There are also unary operations that have one input and one output. In real theory, we define binary addition and binary multiplication and the unary operation labeled slash that is real theory's equivalent of division. We are used to dividing one number by another, but how do we divide just one number? It's fairly easy. Slash behaves like an inverse. Slash x equals x to the power of negative 1 in almost all cases, except for when x equals 0. For example, slash 5 as I wrote earlier is 1 fifth or 0 0.2. Writing a fraction such as 2 over 3 is really just 2 times slash 3. Just like how this is a times 2b plus c for example. With an unwritten multiplication over here. Now, slash 0 is equal to unsigned infinity. So 1 over 0, or 2 over 0, or 3 over 0, is just multiplying the unsigned infinity by a regular number, which of course results in the unsigned infinity again. And 0 over 0 is 0 times the unsigned infinity, which is defined as the bottom element in real theory. Also, subtraction can be defined as a minus b equals a plus negative b. So having a separate subtraction operation is not necessary, as it is just an inverse of the addition. The system also has a bunch of other properties that you can see on its Wikipedia page. I will link this in the description alongside all the other resources I have used. You can also construct other reels, not just the one I showed that relates to the projective reels, but I don't know too much about that, so I won't talk about that in this video. Section 6. Lessons learned? First of all, I'd like to say that real theory isn't very useful, like at all. So why did I spend so much time talking about it? Well. First of all, it is cool to be able to quote-unquote break the rules of math, but the main point here is that there are many alternative systems of math and other parts of math that aren't talked about in school at all. For me, they are way more interesting. So yeah, if you didn't know, non-standard math is a thing and it can be very interesting. I was personally very intrigued by real theory when I first saw it. I might make some videos about other things like this in the future, such as the surreal numbers, which are even more fascinating and interesting than real theory, but for now this is as far as I'll go.